Welcome to the Emergency Train Northwest AED portion of your CPR First Aid AED certification. Uh, remembering that when you complete the course, uh, there's going to be some quizzes to take. You're going to have a CPR and First Aid quiz, you also have an AED quiz. These are not meant to stumble you or make it difficult for you. This is basic information. Uh, so you can save a life and not be super stressed out about taking a quiz when you're really doing basic operations and saving lives, okay? Uh, you will also be submitting a video of your CPR, okay, and that will entail of you performing CPR on some type of an inanimate object. Again, we highly rec we require you never to do CPR in a person who doesn't need it. Do not be taking your loved ones saying, I need to do my CPR hands-on, so let me demonstrate this by using you. No, use an inanimate object. This is the AED portion, okay? AED stands for Automated external defibrillation or defibrillator. It is not automatic, they're automated. An automated external defibrillator, okay? That's why these are placed in public facilities. If they were automatic, these would be super dangerous, okay? People would just be shocking people because they got in the cut line in front of them or something like that. So no, they're automated, not automatic. There are about 20 different AEDs on the market. They're, they range from style and color and function, but they all have to do the basic functions, the same basic functions of every AED, right? And that is an on-off button and a shock button, okay? At least two buttons. Some of them have info buttons, some of them have different buttons, some of them have bells, some have whistles, right? Look, listen to the machine. Listen to the machine you listen to the machine. No matter which machine you are using, you listen to that machine, okay? They're all easy to use. Trust me, I could take my key fob, throw it to you, and you could drive my truck right now, and I bet I could. you could throw me your keys and I could figure out how to drive your Tesla. I don't even know if they have keys, but we could figure it out, okay? They all do the same basic function. I would just have to listen to the machine and understand simple parts of the machine. For an AED, it's an on-off switch, okay, button, and a shock button. And then the other buttons just fall in there. If the machine tells you to push them, it's that easy. Come on, I went to Ridgefield High School in Ridgefield, Washington. If I can figure this out, you can. Go Spuds. All right, here is what your heart does when you go to death. When you go, when you're going into the bad darkness of the tunnel, okay? Normal sinus rhythm, ventricular fibrillation, fine fibrillation, flatline. This is not accurate. I am not an artist. I'm not a sketch sketcher of exact rhythms on people. Okay, so let's just let's just make believe that these are true. Okay, but this would be what we would call a normal sinus rhythm. This would be ventricular fibrillation, fine fibrillation, and then flatline, or what we call a systole. Okay, when you use an AD, there are four things you have to be concerned with when you use an automated external defibrillator. First is hair. If you bear the chest and they're Chewbacca, in fact, you bear the chest and you like chewy no, right? You gotta shave them before you shock them. You shave them where the pads go. Pad goes here, pad goes here. That's where we're shaving the patient. We're not putting them on their stomach and doing their whole back too, right? We're not lathering up. We're shaving them. Boom, boom. Your AED kit. You should have a response kit with every AD, and in that kit should be a razor, or should be expired pads that are used for hair removal or, pat, or hair removal pads, okay? If you got your AD through our company, we have set you up with everything you need. One-stop shop. Hair, remove hair from the area where the pads go. Two, water. We don't want our patient soaked in water or in a puddle of water. We want them dry, specifically the chest area so the pads will stick, okay? But we don't want them in a puddle and less kneeling in a puddle with them either, okay? So we wanna make sure the chest is free from water and we're not kneeling in water with them. Metal, any metal within an inch of the pad placement should be removed. Not all metals are conductive to electricity, but a lot of them are. Therefore, if I put a pad here and a pad here and I have any metal within an inch of that pad, okay? it needs to be removed and clear. Saying clear four times. When we say clear, this is not Hollywood, we just go clear, cuckoo, 
right? You go, I'm clear, you're clear, everyone's clear, shocking clear, then you push the button. These are really easy machines. In fact, I'm gonna show you on the most basic machine there is, and really, it, it, they're, they don't get way more advanced than this. They all do the same thing, okay? So here we go. Hey, hey, are you okay? No response. Oh, there's Sally again. Sally, call 91. Nathan, grab an AED. Now, we begin our CPR. Head, tilt, chin, lift. We look, listen, feel. We go to the center of the chest. We push down for the 200 compressions, right? When the AED arrives, okay, let's say that Nathan grabs the AED. He brings it to me, but he's not hes not trained on it. He doesn't know what to do. He just knew in, in employee orientation, when he showed up to your company, that you said, hey, by the way, part of employee orientation is telling you where the AED is, Nathan. And Nathan, welcome aboard to the company. This is where we keep the AED. If anyone ever tells you to get the AED, don't ask questions. You grab the AED and you take it to them. When Nathan arrives, he goes, Hey man, I don't know how to use it, but I passed orientation, here's the AED. We want to put the AED at the head of the patient opposite the CPR performer. I've completed my round of 200 compressions. I've passed the CPR portion off to Sally. Sally's now performing CPR. Nathan shows up with the AED, hands me the AED. I put it at the head of the patient opposite the CPR performer. I go snap, snap, I open it up and I turn it on and I do what? listen to the machine okay so i'm listening connect electrons so this one says connect electrodes others might say open gray plastic case some might say pull white is he adhesive pad just listen to the machine these are the electrodes so i look and they have pictures on them oh man see this is easy pictures so i stop i know i need to put this on a bare chest of a patient right so stop sally connect and I bear the chest, and this patient just happens to have Velcro on their chest, so that works out really well for us. Stop CPR, put the pad right over, right where it's supposed to go. Sally's back on the chest performing CPR. I take the second pad, put it just like where it shows, and I put the pads on, and it would look something like this. Connect. Could like like that. Could look like that. Right, look, we're trying to get it as close to that as possible, right? It's not critical, but it's critical we at least get them in the right location area, okay? Once they're connected, stand clear. Stop CPR, Sally. Analyzing now. Stand clear. So it says stand clear, analyzing now, stand clear. What the machine is doing is it's looking for ventricular fibrillation. It's looking for that V fib, right? Ventricular fibrillation the shockable rhythm in a patient that we're gonna use with an automated external defibrillator. Ventricular fibrillation. If it finds the patient in V-fib, right, then it would say, it would say, I'm not doing a blooper reel. Stand Maybe clear. we will, okay. Analyzing Stand clear. Now. Analyzing. Stand clear. Stand clear. Looking for V-fib. If it finds it. Shock advised. This one's like, hey, we're going to light them up. Right? So you just listen to the machine. Stand clear. Push to shock. I'm clear. You're clear. Everyone's clear. Shocking clear. Now the patient does that, you don't do that, okay? The patient will do that. Stand okay? clear. And then you just continue to listen to the machine. Leave the machine on, listen to the machine. Leave the pads on, listen to the machine. When the fire department or fire and rescue show up, right, they might move the pads, they might disconnect your machine, they might use your machine. Just let them do what they do. Just leave everything on when you're working with the patient and always leave the machine on. Because the machine might tell you at this point, check airway breathing circulation, perform CPR, shock again, whatever. Here's the cool, look, here's the cool thing about AEDs. You turn on the machine and you're done thinking. It's gonna tell you what to do. It's gonna tell you start CPR, not start CPR. It's gonna tell you if there's motion detected on some patients, it's gonna tell you if the electrodes aren't sticking right, it's gonna tell you to shock or not shock, or it's gonna, some of them have built-in metronomes for the CPR, that keeps you on track for the seat. These are amazing, and they're totally inexpensive, okay? Expe 
it's relative, okay? Like the, the units, I'm, look, I'm completely honest. The units that we put out on the market are about 1270 bucks, okay? I mean, that's pretty inexpensive um, for a basic, basic unit. And really that's what you need. You need something, that, you don't need the bells and whistles, you need something that's gonna save lives, right? So there you go, AEDs. Now, if you have a child and infant AED pack, okay? Just wanna make sure you're aware. Those go front and back, and you will see some manufacturers on adult pads that will go front and back also. Follow the pictures on the pads. Listen to the machine, follow the pictures on the pads. The child and infant pads are typically for patients who are less than eight years old or less than 55 pounds. Okay, so you're looking at size and age of the patient, you're going, that's a, that's a big six-year-old, right? We're gonna go this way or adult pads, right? Oh man, that's a tiny, you know, that, that's a tiny five-year-old. We're gonna go boom, front and back. We follow the pictures on the pads. Listen to the machine, follow the pictures on the pads. Good CPR, right? Don't interrupt CPR. CPR co coexists with AEDs, okay? Me remember, Sally was doing the CPR while I was putting the pads on. I, she just moves for a little bit because I want to maintain a high rate of efficient CPR. And the most important thing when you're using an AED is making sure you stay clear when that's getting ready to shock someone, okay? Automated external defibrillation. Okay, they save lives. Look for them. When you're out, look for them. This is what saves lives. You're doing really good high efficiency CPR with a good AED, right? Good usage of an AED, boom, you're saving lives, all right? Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, check out our other videos we have on CPR for adults, for children, and infants, um, our first aid 12 rules, and uh, we probably will have a blooper reel at some point, but Immersive Train Northwest, we're here to serve you, right? We love our students and we want you to be successful. We want you saving lives. Thanks.